There is growth in income in a semiconductor and a financial company. And our growth in income stock strategist Todd Bunton is going to tell us more about each one. Todd, first one is Texas Instruments. Very recognizable name. Yeah. They make a wide range of semiconductors. That's right, yep. And they've, uh, yeah, they're found in various end markets. Uh, they focused a lot lately on analog. Uh, that's about 60% of their revenue lately. And that's really been a huge growth driver for them, not only in terms of revenue, but they have wider profit margins. Mm. And they're also more stable uh, in terms of you know, ec economic cyclicality. Yeah. Uh, and there, there have been recent warnings. Uh, Microchip was a company they warned about, uh, you know, uh, kind of a peak in, in the industry. Um, but Texas Instruments isn't seeing any of that, and, and I'll get to that in a bit. I remember yeah. when their big thing was handheld calculators. Yeah, and they still make them. <laughs> they still make them. That's, that is a part of their revenue, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I have some old TI calculators lying around. Right, those brick uh, ones. Yeah, the <laughs> big, yeah, and the big graphing calculator, sure. <laughs> um, yeah, and, but yeah, they make the semiconductors that you, they can be found in various end markets, communications, computing, industrial, consumer automotive markets mm -hmm. um, and like I said less uh, less sensitivity to the overall economy a bit more stable and the company delivered a very strong beat on October 20th they saw an 8% increase in total revenue as driven by 11% increase in the analog uh, segment that I talked about and their gross margin uh, increased to a record 58.4% and again like I said those analog chips are wider profit margins for them mm -hmm. um, and management also provided strong Q4 guidance so that kind of assuaged fears of you know, a slowdown in, in, in their end markets, at least. Sure. And that prompted analysts to almost unanimously revise their estimates higher for both this year and next. Uh, as you can see here, that sent it to a Zach's rank of two, which is a buy rating, uh, but very strong earnings momentum here. You can see a nice, solid increase in, in consensus estimates, beautiful slope to that, kind of a stair-step pattern. Uh, they, you, you can see consensus estimates have been trending higher, not just after this last quarter, but pretty much all year. So a lot going right for these guys. Uh, based on consensus estimates, analysts are expecting 41% earnings growth from this company this year and 17% growth next year. It's interesting since uh, people, companies who use their product have issued warnings. Right. Yeah. And, you know, and they are very high, uh, highly international, too. So a lot of the revenue comes from overseas. But, mm -hmm. uh, but so far, so good. And, and there are no signs of a slowdown here. And you can see estimates are increasing and that stock price is increasing, too. Along with the, with the growth that you're getting, uh, of course, very good dividend as well. They pay a dividend that yields 2.7%. I see that. Yeah, and they increased that by 13% in September. Uh, so that's always a good sign from management that, you know, the, that the growth they're seeing is sustainable. Uh, it was the 11th, 11th consecutive year of a dividend increase, too. And if you look over the last 10 years, they've increased their dividend at a 30% compound annual rate. So absolutely phenomenal on the income side, very shareholder friendly. They have a strong balance sheet and solid free cash flow, which allows them to do that. They're also buying back a lot of stock. Mm -hmm. So a lot going right here. Um, in terms of valuation, they trade about 18 times forward earnings, slightly above their 10-year median of 17 times. But like I said, with their increased focus on the analog uh, you know, segment, and the wider profit margins, I'd say that's justified. Hard to argue with, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, the other financial company, it's actually a financial holding company, right. First Busey Corporation. Yeah, yeah they're a, a primarily a small cap bank. So they, okay. yeah, they have, uh, they're located in Champaign, Illinois, have about four and a half billion dollars in, asset, in, uh, in assets. Uh, primarily uh, branches in Illinois and uh, one in Indiana, also seven branches in uh, Southwest Florida. Uh, so they, they do have some exposure to that market, which has traditionally been a stronger uh, loan growth market for them. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, a lot going right for this bank. They delivered a very strong uh, third quarter results on, uh, on October 21st, and that was driven you know, by strength across the board. So they had solid loan growth. They primarily focused on commercial loans, so, uh, so th you know, that's, uh, that's their focus there. But credit quality improved, uh, non-interest expenses declined, so their efficiency ratio improved. And that led to uh, solid bottom line growth for the company and prompted analysts to revise their estimates higher, uh, not only for the rest of 2014, but for 2015 as well, as you can see here. Um, so good earnings momentum going on here. It's a Zach's rank of two, which is a buy rating. And based on those consensus estimates, analysts are expecting about 31% earnings growth this year and 17% growth next year. It's very solid. Some of that is driven by a, a small acquisition they made of a bank headquartered in Pekin, Illinois, uh, just a few branches there. but. Um, in addition to that growth, they pay a dividend that yields 3.2%. So very good income uh, 
to go along with that, and they increased that dividend by 25% earlier in the year. Wow. Uh, and they're very well capitalized, too, so that, that's why uh, this bank is uh, able to increase their dividends so well. Mm -hmm. So you know, all, you're getting growth, you're getting income, all at a reasonable price. They trade about 15 times forward earnings, slightly below its 10-year median, uh, about 1.7 times tangible book value, so you know, very reasonable valuation to go along with good growth and income metrics. Could be a good total return play over the next six months. All right. Do you own either one? I do not. Check out other stock picks on our website, Zacks.com, both in the growth and income category and in other investing categories as well. Link to them right off the homepage with Todd. I'm Terry Ruffalo.